Hi, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Sin Lagos. I will be your host today. I'm super excited because today we're going to be exploring AI with Elnaz Mansouri, an abstract artist who's so, so super talented. And hi, Elnaz. How are you doing? Hi, Sin. How's it going? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm so excited to have you here, especially because I'm ex especially curious about your process. I've been just looking at all your artwork and it's so beautiful and so colorful. So for the chat here, um, I want to say hello. Let's say hello to the chat. Hey, Alessandra. Hey, Umacorn. What's up? Hey, Jack. We have Oliver in the house. So this is live, folks. So definitely jump in the chat and join the community. Ask us questions. Ask um, uh, questions throughout the chat, and I'll be asking Elna's questions along the way. If you're on YouTube, come along to Behance and join us here. And Elna's, can you tell us a little bit about the project that you're going to be working on today? Sure. Uh, so I'm a visual artist uh, practicing in the fields of photography, 3D art, and recently I'm experimenting with AI. I think it's such a great uh, revolution in technology and mm -hmm. um, we're going to do uh, exciting photo composite in Photoshop and I'll also teach uh, the audience how to use Adobe Firefly, how to write the perfect prompt to get your desired image and all the settings that uh, we can use in Adobe Firefly. That's wonderful. I was just telling Elnaz that I've been in the mindset of AI. So there's so many questions. There's so many different ways and workflows to approach AI. So I'm happy to see you uh, jumping right into Adobe Firefly. Um, so yes, yeah, let, for let's sure. get started as soon as, you can, as, as you're ready. Sure. Uh, I can just uh, show the audience a little bit about my projects, sure. uh, the previous ones that I some of them got featured on Behance. Um, wow. I was Congrats. a photographer. Thank you. <laughs> I initially am a photographer, but I never uh, limited myself to a uh, specific medium or tool. I always liked the idea of uh, experimenting with different programs or different um, medium to uh, create an image. I think uh, at this day, uh, we don't really need a camera to make an image and these are some of the uh, previous works i've uh, done using a drone so that uh, aerial perspective really gave me a new uh, idea of how to see my surroundings and what the difference it can make to use a drone instead of like a dslr and um it's always uh, fascinating to me that um, the tools we make can make mm. such a huge difference in the way we deliver our um, projects and ideas these mm -hmm. are some of the nature photography i did before and i i'm also uh, really fascinated to experiment with magical realism and um, really uh, showing how we can blur the line between reality and fantasy. These are some of the 3D art I've been doing uh, before. Um, it's always interesting that uh, we're not really limited to our physical reality anymore because uh, we're using a camera in, in a 3D program as well. And even with AI, we're using a camera uh, like the way you write your prompt all the settings you think about the composition it all matters so my background in photography is still helping me when it comes to ai so we can start using adobe firefly to um, create um fan uh, the project i'm thinking today we're gonna make fantasy playgrounds in Iceland. So I mm. studied uh, my master's uh, degree in Iceland for two years. And uh, you might already know like how magical this uh, place is. The landscape, uh, everything about Iceland is already very magical. And uh, the 
uh, experience I had there, I was thinking, uh, how can I uh, incorporate even more surrealism in my art uh, when I'm thinking about Iceland? And um, there's this folk tale in Iceland that uh, there are hidden people living in the volcanic rocks and they're called Huldu folk. So Huldu means hidden and uh, folk means people. Mm -hmm. And I'm always uh, fascinated by this uh, uh, folk tale. And I imagine what their habitat would look like, what their playgrounds, their houses would look like. And today we're going to make a project based on this concept using Firefly and Adobe Photoshop. Uh Absolutely amazing. I love the the way that you're um, really emphasizing on how our medium often changes and it, it results in a different output from drone, DSLR to now we're jumping into it to be Firefly to output a, a, a visual out of your imagination. So I'm really excited. I, I know that you told me about the folklore story, so I'm excited to see how you develop it. Yes. So uh, this is the Adobe Firefly uh, platform and you can do so many things uh, with this amazing tools that uh, Firefly offers. Uh, today we're going to do text to image um, generative art and I'm going to start by telling you how much a difference a prompt can make when you're uh, thinking of a project. So uh, right now, I'm thinking uh, like a very general prompt. Uh, we can say a fantasy uh, playground in Iceland. Uh, okay. And all the keywords you put make so such a huge difference. And the more precise you are, the better the results are. It's all about like the placements of words, the uh, settings we use. I'll, I'll go over all the cool settings in uh, Firefly. So you're using Firefly 2, which is um, also equipped with far more settings than we're used to in Adobe Firefly originally, oh. uh, the first model, right? Okay. I, I didn't know <laughs> I was... <laughs> Uh, yeah, always yeah. Using, yeah. So we so got a recent update, and this mm -hmm. one has a few things here on the right hand side that you, I'm sure you've been exploring already, but yet yeah, mm -hmm. belongs yes. to model too. Yes, there are such amazing settings here. So th this is uh, some of the results we got, and they're already pretty interesting. Um, you see how. Uh, the landscape is very realistic and uh, the playgrounds are uh, colorful. You see some people here, but um, I'm thinking we should start with the landscape uh, orientation. Uh, the aspect ratio you can choose here, square, portrait, white screen. I'm thinking landscape and it's already in a photo uh, setting and mm -hmm. The visual intensity is about how photorealistic your work is going to be. So the, the more intense it is, the more um, maybe like it's more similar to illustrations and like digital paintings. But we can try it and see how different it can. It's gonna I have noticed that the more you push that lever to the right hand side, it looks mm -hmm. more illustrative, um, that kind of aesthetic that we were accustomed to. Yes. And then somewhere in the middle, we start to get that surrealism where it starts to, uh, what you said, blur the lines between mm -hmm. uh, realistic and uh, actual yes. Realis yes. realism. So I'm, uh, t I'm thinking today I want something more subtle. So I'll bring the visual intensity down. And here you can choose if you want hyper-realistic or you can go to like um, even concepts. I was checking yesterday and futuristic was my favorite. We could try that and see how different different it's going to be. But there's so much you can explore with all these options and mm. it's like an endless 
Yeah, I can definitely spend a lot of time in this um, category. There's so many different aesthetics and styles and Mm -hmm. um, you can also have an opportunity to upload your own. Have you tried doing that? I've tried that. That's also really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, I was thinking today we could um, start from scratch and see what Adobe Firefly uh, offers on its own without um, my own uh, specific style. I, I like that upper right one. It looks really interesting. Yeah, I like how um, there's this sense of um, like fantasy and um, so the reflections. Shape. Yes. So uh, I'm gonna do some uh, adjustments to my prompt. I'm thinking um, if we're gonna do something uh, imaginary, what if we bring um, like an animal in in this uh, playground that we want, like a slide in the shape of a uh, horse or a whale, because Iceland has so many beautiful animals. And I'm thinking, what if we do like a slide in the shape of a whale in a playground? I'm curious, yeah. almost do you, uh, plan the prompts ahead of time do you have a notebook where you jot them down as you think about your concepts um, how how do you source or you kind of test and try them on the go um, to be firefly I usually just start with uh, an idea and then I uh, start to add more detail and more um, uh, it's all about like experimenting with the placement of words with like instead of uh, writing like if you want to have a ladder you can write ladder or step and it's all it makes a difference um mm. but it i think it's um great to practice writing prompts and the beauty of uh, firefly is that it actually offers you uh, samples like it suggests different prompts uh, here you have like prompt suggestions that uh, you can use uh, which is amazing uh, I've used other AI platforms but this is something that uh, very is interesting with Adobe Firefly um, so here we can say like in a playground in the, the vol- volcanic fields of Iceland and then it gives you like suggestions highlands under dramatic blue sky or during golden hour and Mm -hmm. that's the beauty of AI I think it's uh, amazing how it can uh, spark new ideas in your mind and I really enjoy that because as an artist sometimes you are like trying to have control over your work but that freedom and that uh that uh way of thinking can definitely change your path and just how you can explore other ideas that's a beautiful thing about ai i tend to agree because it's definitely a collaborative process with the ai system itself um, I notice, especially, you know, this is a solo work. You can spend hours here creating prompts, but just the idea that you're finding inspirations from communities or that in the prompt itself, you're getting these alternative uh, ways of formatting your or structuring mm-hmm. your sentence. It can like lead to like future ideas and so on. I exactly. think in the past, having programs from Adobe, they weren't as um, like uh, conducive to give you like these extra tips. So I'm Mm -hmm. just like in awe of all of those little tips that kind of come along in the Adobe ecosystem to help you. Exactly. So this is already a really beautiful render that I enjoy this well. (laughs) (laughs) It's so cool. And you can, if you like a specific uh, render, you can go to edit and show similar and it gives you similar uh, renders uh, that is uh, similar to them yes so that becomes like your core image you've Mm -hmm. selected it you say that 
this one's about close to what I like. Let's exactly. keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like all these shots and how the light is uh, shining through the uh, slide and creating such a beautiful uh, golden hour shot. And we could experiment more with the settings here. Uh, there are like color and tone that you can choose between vibrant colors, pastel colors, my favorite is pastel color because usually in Iceland uh, it's the weather is mostly cloudy and the colors mm. are very uh, pastel so we can take this off from That's our interesting prompt. to think that you want to be able to emulate like a sense of this is this feels like Iceland it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a tropical environment <laughs> so let's add a little bit of those blue hues somehow um mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a photographer's mindset, right? Like that's mm -hmm. you equipping those those um, um, attributes to this photo. Exactly. Oh, and wow. <laughs> this whole um, it makes such a huge difference in the renders as well. So you can see how it became even more uh, fantastical, and uh, yeah. the colors are so uh, beautiful and dreamy. I love this one. It's so beautiful. Alessandra and, says, yeah, this one's interesting. Wow. Yeah. These are really surreal. <laughs> and the beauty of AI is I think your image doesn't really have to make sense. <laughs> so, so this is a beautiful slide that only hidden people maybe can use. <laughs> but it's yeah. still really cool. Right. So functionally, it might not make sense. But mm -hmm. like the form is there in some other ways. It's a great mm -hmm. exercise for anybody who is um, maybe in a work, it, I would say in a discipline that is very specific, like industrial design, graphic design, you know, it's a great practice for you to kind of step out of that box um, and just let go and kind of randomize mm -hmm. like the requests over and over to feel what that feels like. Yes. And I've heard some times the criticism about AI that uh, you don't have a control over the render but I feel like in any other medium you never always have control you can have something in mind but the outcome can be different and that's a beautiful thing it, so you don't have to uh, worry about things not coming out of the way you imagined mm -hmm. and this uh, experimentation is the fun part of the whole ai uh, yeah field. i tend to agree with that the experimentation is definitely one of my favorite parts that mm -hmm. has me spending hours in there um i definitely uh do side with the folks saying that they want a little control in some in some ways so i i like this new upgrade um in adobe firefly because we have photo controls and a lot of other elements here that i think we've been craving exactly so. and here you can even choose different lightings if you want something like a low lighting harsh light golden hour mm -hmm. i usually choose surreal lighting because in iceland the light is always very surreal e either in the summer or in winter it's always very different from anything i've seen but mm, okay. um, Alessandra says, I don't know how I feel like going on some of those slides, but I like the colors a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very cool. So this is more like a pink sunset kind of uh, lighting that is nice. This is wow. also really nice. It's like um, the light is shining from the right side and the shadows are very realistic. This the is my favorite. Is so dramatic. <laughs> and we could do it even like um what can we do? Golden hour. That's, That's one awesome. of my favorites. Golden yeah. hour. Especially if I'm selecting people in my scene. Mm -hmm. Um, it tends to look really beautiful on their skin, as it does in real life as well. So it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um later we can do all of these in our prompts as well so okay. uh, now we have this golden hour beautiful light it's very 
this is my favorite. It's mm-hmm. very sharp, and I love the detail in this. <laughs> so we can do a little bit of uh, prompt uh, adjustments here. If we want something uh, that is not <clears throat> here in our initial lighting setting, we can do um, maybe like overcast and misty instead. Mm, and okay. it, it can make a difference uh, in the whole uh, atmosphere of the image. Interesting, right? So if they're not available, you're going to put it in into the prompt mm-hmm. um, to request those um, those lighting exactly. yes. features. Yes, so now it's uh, very soft and misty kind of uh, atmosphere. The first that one is, is so cool, that angle. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love the detail. And this is also very cute. <laughs> Definitely we exudes can... a different mood, right? Mm, different it's color. all about what you're imagining. And um, you can always change things. That's the beauty of Adobe Photoshop and the generative feel. And that's what we're going to do today as well. Um, so now we can experiment with the composition a little bit. If you want something uh, like a wide angle, you can choose this uh, setting. I want something like that for today because I want the space to work uh, within Adobe Photoshop and add more elements to my okay. scene. So that so we're we can be jumping yeah. into a different uh, application. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. These are like more wide angle shots and you can see there's more space around the slide. Yeah. And the overcast setting is still very uh present. So when you're when you're looking at these photos, uh, you're use you're thinking of using them as a foundation towards the rest of uh your process, right? Yes. Okay. Sometimes I could get the perfect idea by just writing the prompt and the render would be mm-hmm. perfect and I wouldn't really need to add or remove something. But if I'm thinking uh, this could have a potential to do something more with it, I usually take it to Photoshop and I could work with more detail or um like remove certain things from the image or add different settings, like change the colors or anything mm, that okay. I don't really uh, want in my work. Right. But um, I was thinking we could do also shot from above. That also makes a difference in the angle of the image that we have. Yeah, there's different photographic techniques that we employ in our own photographic practice like shooting from above different perspectives shooting from below so think Mm -hmm. i I think like for me that's often a thing that i also uh like to introduce into these generative um prompts is Mm -hmm. different perspectives yes exactly so now we have this uh more like a top view of the slide that it's very cool i i feel but uh we could do something different now uh, maybe change the color of the slide or make the slide in the shape of a horse instead that other way and we could remove the overcast setting and now it's offering us again at night under cloudy sky we could try that see what we get maybe we get northern lights (laughs) that would be cool i see greg here has a question but i think it might be a little bit closer to when we're in our photoshop workflow uh wondering if there's a way for uh adobe sensei to detect when a photo or image is stretched out of proportion and if it can fix that um what do you think about that stretched out of proportion Mm -hmm. seems like a photoshop question yeah Mm -hmm. 
Yes. We could we'll, we'll try always, it out there. Yes, for sure. We could always expand the image as much as we want. And uh, we could try that today. And I'm going to do sky replacement and awesome. do generative fill. And these are we, really cool. I love We the... have some new folks in here too. So I'm going to say hi to the chat. Anur, Tahira. Hi, welcome. We're um, working on Adobe Firefly at the moment mm -hmm. and generating some really, really cool slides. Hi, everyone. So excited to meet you all. Thank you for watching. Tara says, quite interesting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm so glad that you're all interested to learn about AI. I feel it's very life changing for our visual artists and um, personally, I'm really embracing it. Oh, I'm so curious to learn more about that. What What do you feel has um, shifted in your career path when with AI now? Um, for me, uh, because I started my journey as a visual, as a photographer, especially a landscape and nature photographer, I was um, limited to my physical reality. And right now I feel... Um, I could really have that freedom to imagine anything that and um, present it using these amazing tools. So I feel like as a photographer, I don't really need a physical camera to capture photographs anymore. I am free to experiment with different tools like AI or 3D art. These are all very... Uh, amazing how photorealistic your image can be or how you don't really are limited you don't need the physical reality to uh, present your ideas in a surreal way anymore mm. that's how it's changing my path I feel as a child I was very in my head all the time and like in my imaginary world and right now, I, I feel <laughs> I'm so f free to express that. All those oh, I love that. thoughts I had in my mind, I am not really bound to a camera and my physical reality to show them anymore. I could use these great tools to capture my imagination in, mm -hmm. in real life. That's, that's a great food for thought for anybody uh, considering whether AI photography and any regard of the AI photography developments that we're having right now, if it's for you at all. Um, I love the way that you're able to see it as uh, an opportunity to not be limited by your location, your equipment, um, your imagination. Mm -hmm. Great, yes. great, great way to see it. <laughs> yes. I will always ask myself, what is the difference between a memory that is lived and the one that is imagined? And mm. I can never really say if they're different because they're in my mind. So if I imagine something or if I remember a memory, they're both uh, an image in my mind. So that's what I try to do to, uh, to experiment with that idea of reality versus dreams and fantasies. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I think there's a there's a point there where everything starts to blend together your mm -hmm. memory is part of your imagination at this point right at a certain mm -hmm. point so yes. that that I love I love the way you said that thank you <laughs> these are really cool I like the pink slide pink <laughs> is my favorite color I really love how like I can tell in your you artwork <laughs> <laughs> thank you and so these are really cool settings that we can always experiment with. And now we have the futuristic uh, effect here. You can even remove them if you don't really want them in your work anymore. Uh, I still have hyper-realistic uh, here. M movements, we have so many options to use. Cyberpunk, we could try that. <laughs> I it's, like cyberpunk a lot, yeah. actually. <laughs> Usually have... the colors are so dreamy, like pink mm -hmm. and purple. Um, 
in and kind I already of some have... of my favorite movies and are in like a cyberpunk kind of mm-hmm. aesthetic. Yes. I like the little head, the horse head here. So um, these are really cute and we could um, work with them in Photoshop. Okay. Um, I already have some uh, work that I uh, added to my favorites um, that we can choose. And these are some of my previous renders that I created in Firefly. Mm -hmm. I was experimenting. you, You favorited each one yes Mm -hmm. these are uh, in the favorites option that you can access anytime yes and these are the ones i've already created and my favorite was really this one uh, because i like how uh, close to my idea of iceland this shot is the mossy landscape the lighting all the cloud rolling in the color and yeah i i was thinking to start working with this image in photoshop anura said this scene looks like a like it's coming from a kubrick movie mm-hmm. i love you know stanley uh, kubrick <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a great compliment thank you uh, and then I'm actually really uh, inspired by films and most of my work, uh, I because I watch a lot of films, I try to like think about like the frame as a movie still, <laughs> usually when I'm creating. Yeah. yeah, some of the most beautiful masterpieces have the most like uh, beautiful visuals that you can just mm-hmm. study and try to yes. uh, dissect and break them down into a prompt, potentially. Exactly. Also, Andrei Tarkovsky, his movies like Solaris and that sci-fi feel, the lighting and that uh, surreal uh, reflection of nature and the storyline really inspired me in my journey as an artist. And that's why mm. Iceland reminds me of like those movies because it's such a surreal place and the the, the folk tales, all those um, imaginary situations that they uh, write about them in their um, stories and poems. That's really inspiring to me. Yeah, I can see so- that. Definitely one of the things that. I mean, I've never been there, but what I'm getting is fr- the perception from the photos that I witness or the works of art that I see. So it's, I love that you're embedding a sense of story there yes. that goes back to them. Exactly. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So now we have our image and we can start by, uh, if we want to change our sky, like if we have something else in mind, uh, there's this great option in Photoshop. Uh, you can go to select and sky, and then you can write what kind of sky you're thinking uh, as a prompt. You go to generative fill. And so for this shot, I'm thinking like a Northern Lights. We could do something fun like that. Okay northern lights and go to generate and maybe it could take several prompts to get exactly what i'm thinking because you can have like oh wow this is beautiful (laughs) yeah so maybe we don't need like multiple prompts this is nice i like how there's also the moonlight here and I love the first one too. And um, although there's less green, it's more like soft white and purplish light. Uh, we could add more specific wow. details. Um, maybe we could say cloudy sky with northern lights. 
so to add more uh, clouds and mixture of lights and clouds you could see what it comes up those, with. those are great options already the first three yes um yeah there's this is nice too this is more of what i was thinking this one is the light is too maybe sh too sharp too hard for yeah. for my this is also very surreal and beautiful although um i want northern lights in my work so i'm thinking this one is really beautiful we could keep this one and um since our image is landscape we could do uh, uh expansion of the frame i usually flatten the shot and then go to crop and then you can expand the image as long or as wide as you want and then go to generate and the beauty of this option is that you can add so much detail to your work. So this is how it expanded my mm. shot. And yeah, I, I was really able to, to grab the context of the mm -hmm. sky and also the moss at the bottom. Yes. And you can choose which one you want. Um, this is nice. I like the first one because it's giving me that like wide angle. Are you are you aiming for a specific ratio for I don't know for Behans for your website or for print? For uh, for my Instagram, I usually think about the vertical uh, aspect ratio, like mm -hmm. four by five. Um, okay. For stories, it's nine by six, but. Um, Usually I do that at the end again, like if I want the image to be four by five, I just go to crop and put four by five and crop mm, the image. Yeah. But we could do that at the end when we, when we're done uh, with the shot. And uh, here I see a little bit of the line when we expanded and we could, we could always, uh, use the healing brush to uh, fix the lines but sometimes there it's very um very subtle. clean subtle you don't even need that but i'm very ocd <laughs> yeah it's, it's good to be able to like refine those edges yes, and exactly. make sure it's exactly how you want it yes but in the bottom i don't see that it's so it's perfect here Okay, so now um, I'm thinking here we have this playground, but it's not exactly what I want uh, in my shot. So you can use the lasso tool to create an, or add a specific element anywhere in your picture. And you have to think about the area that you're adding your uh specific object or element and use the lasso tool to select that area i'm thinking this area so you use the generative fill and write a prompt just like you did in adobe firefly here i'm thinking a fantasy play or we could just write a playground in the volcanic or just write a playground in Iceland. Or you could even say a, just a playground. You don't have to be that specific in the mm. beginning. Yeah, I do find it helpful to say a place. I noticed that the types of references can be so different if I say, um, I don't know if I say Cuba versus, mm -hmm. you know, Iceland. It's mm -hmm. going to uh, render something completely different. So I actually enjoy putting the regions or the, the countries yes. or locations. Yes. Because Iceland usually has that like musty or volcanic landscape and mm -hmm. it could be important in the shot that you want to have. 
So um, because I said just a playground, it gave me something like general. Um, this is like a swing, but I want to be more specific. I'll say a slide or a colorful slide. There's something really uh, beautifully ironic about the way there's a playground in this like dramatic, dark mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> space. I love that. I love those choices yes. you're making. Yes. I love empty playgrounds. I feel like that's <laughs> when the <laughs> who do for come to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, these are cute. I like that it's more detailed and you see more like uh something more specific with the slide and um so now i will write like a, a colorful slide in the shape of a well just like we did in uh, F firefly the shape of a whale in a playground I like how it's honoring the light conditions, the shadows, how they're falling off. There is, there's a lot of dif differences I noticed from the very uh, beginning of using um, Photoshop, generative, uh, generative AI and Photoshop, which is also powered by Adobe Firefly. And then the way that it's being developed now, like mm -hmm. my outputs tend to be way better. Um, of course, it's all up to us and how we write that mm -hmm. prompt, but exactly yeah so these are very interesting i like how uh, colorful and surreal this like it's like a sculpture type of uh, playground and we could definitely work with that or keep experimenting more maybe i write just a slide in the shape of a whale in a playground and remove that Iceland part. I would love can... to see some of these playgrounds in real life because mm -hmm. I, you know, in the, in just the idea of blurring the lines between imagination and reality, doing it the yes. other way around would be fun. Oh, the... wow. <laughs> these are really cool. And as you said, I love how it's, um, going well with the initial lighting of the image like the reflection on the veil and the light uh, it, it's very uh, realistic how the prompts are working and as you said uh, you wish you could see them in real life actually yeah. <laughs> the funny part is when I'm in Iceland sometimes I come across such surreal places like in the middle of nowhere there are like a bunch of colored cubes like just placed in the landscape in like huge um sizes oh, wow. i found that in east iceland and i was like wow so anything i'm imagining is actually somewhere <laughs> yeah, real yeah. Life. <laughs> so those were your your those are your points of references it's yes those experiences Yes, mm -hmm. I really like this one that we got in the beginning. Uh, we could add something extra. Maybe I'm going to add a slide uh, to this uh, whale. So you can, uh, let me, okay. So now that you have this layer, you can add extra uh, elements on top of this. And I'm going to select the area that i want and maybe we want a pink slide here a pink slide and it usually uh, keeps the reference in mind that we have this well and it goes yeah so you have a pink slide now <laughs> this is cute <laughs> And you can add different elements on top of this area. Like maybe I add open mouth. <laughs> well, um, 
Yeah. It's like... I think I noticed that all of those um all of those generated images live within one single file because when you look at your layer, there's only one layer. Mm -hmm. Even though those there's been maybe like three, four generations. Mm -hmm. So this is now coming out of the whale's mouth that I uh, wrote here. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, I like this more, but now it's we have this ear. <laughs> He's more of a bunny. <laughs> but you you can always change your ideas or you can remove this also. Or you can say a whale's head. Whale head. You could see what it comes D. Up. Lewis is saying, a Adobe Firefly has blown me away. <laughs> oh, yeah, same. <laughs> I love that we have so many settings now in Firefly. It's giving me so much options to experiment. Yeah. Vicky J says it's a bit of a rabbit hole. That's so that's a good way <laughs> to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could spend hours and uh, when you're using AI, I feel like time goes by so fast. You don't even realize how much time you've spent writing, experimenting. Oh, wow. <laughs> you really think so? That's funny because for me, I think, yeah, sometimes the same. You don't realize how much time you've actually spent in it. But I also realize like when you step away from it, you, you're staring at everything with that same like scope of mind mm -hmm. you start to like see the the sky in a different way <laughs> exactly <laughs> that that headspace yes. ever since i started uh, working with like 3d programs and ai i'm thinking are we actually living in a simulation like <laughs> everything around me could be generated <laughs> there's there's mm -hmm. that that uh blur lines again <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here, I like how the slide is now coming out of the whale's mouth. And I added the fin here. I'm happy with the overall uh, result of these uh, generative fill renders. And we could add something more to the image. Like here, these yellow uh, things I want to replace them with uh, cute elf houses so now we could select these and write uh, tiny Icelandic elf houses and it's very interesting like when you go for a drive like uh, to the countryside in Iceland you see these little houses in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and they're built for these elves they're super cute like i always want to go and like knock on their house. they're built but... for the elf for the t tiny elves mm -hmm. mystical creatures <laughs> these are I've seen cute. things like that too and national forests mm -hmm. where they just leave that um yes. like a tiny little house and yes. you wonder is it there did i just run into <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a mystical creature. <laughs> so uh, now it's giving us something similar to our slide. And I love how it kept that uh, in mind that we have these colors in our image. And it uh, considered that uh, after generating uh, the elf house. Um, but I'm thinking something more like moss coming out of the moss like um, because in Iceland they have turf houses that they're built under the grass and that was like their traditional uh, Viking house uh, oh, wow. I'm thinking that's what I want instead of this colorful uh, house so I, I'm gonna write tiny Icelandic turf house and let's see if it, we get our 
image our new gener generated image yeah it's definitely mimicking the color palettes of the mm -hmm. first one so that's kind of okay. you, you have to be more specific there oh that yes. looks really good but this is more of what i had in mind they're very similar like this one is more what i was thinking i like how like it has this cute window and we could work with that also like we could add tiny red door and red door and work with the hi window. there shana for for those of you just joining us elna's is in photoshop and she's continuing her project from adobe firefly um we're so far we've expanded and we're adding these mystical objects and all out of your imagination from your time in iceland mm -hmm. so cool <laughs> Thank definitely you. drop into the chat and ask us any questions along the way we're live so we'll um, have elna's um reply to any of your questions yes for sure these are the doors that we got and i like this one specifically we could always adjust the colors because if it's like too saturated or doesn't match the whole lighting we could always edit that i leave it all at the end and we could do the color correction at the end and i'm thinking here i want a window but with like lights on in the house so a uh, red window with lights on. It's so amazing that we could add so many things with just one prompt. Sometimes it takes maybe more experimentation, but today I'm so happy we got all the details oh, that we want. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is the window we got, but maybe I don't want to write red now. I want more focus on the light behind the window with lights on. I think behind. when um Adobe, uh, when I started playing with generative fill, um the only thing I would do was add things, and I did not know quite what to add. So it was always mm -hmm. like, wait, is this correct? I love that you're entering these like uh, fantasy plays where like you can add just about anything. Mm -hmm. um, just breaking that boundary completely yes. is really helpful. And just your train of thought as you're creating prompts. <laughs> yes. So these are the windows we got. Maybe I want to um, just remove this first. You can use the lasso tool do generative fill and just go generate and it uh, uh, does a generative fill according to the surroundings so now you mm -hmm. remove that window and I want to add something here instead in the middle of the wall do you notice um, a difference and whenever you make a selection a certain shape Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you find yourself using that where like if you make a circle then it's going to render something in a circular mm -hmm. um, shape if you make a square it'll probably fill that in as well um i haven't noticed that that it makes a difference in the shape mm -hmm. uh, unless uh, if i go like very specific shape like if i go like like very yeah a yeah. specific shape then it only generates in the that area. area yeah, yeah that i selected but if i maybe go like round almost and just say a window it uh, mm. considers just like a regular window unless i say a round window Mm, or okay. like the shape of the window in my sometimes prompt. i grab the circular marquee tool and then mm -hmm. that can give me that um i'll put but that's so interesting because yes a window will traditionally mm -hmm. be a square um, mm -hmm. so it needs yes. a little bit more specification yes a window with lights on 
um trying to make it like um, simple but more yeah okay okay this is more of what i was thinking something with like lights on behind it and you can always um go to your mask layer here and use a brush to er either erase or bring back different details in your uh, layer so now i want to remove like around this area and mm, okay like, if i don't want something in my layer That's interesting. i can remove it yeah and if you want to bring it to back details. yes and you can bring them back when you go reverse here and use the white color like bring the details back but and just a quick time check we have about 20 minutes left mm -hmm. so uh for everyone in the chat um toss in your questions we do have a question already uh we have andy saying hi i'm andy from indonesia awesome hi, welcome andy. andy um i'm interested in graphic design manipulation specifically uh where should i start to create awesome designs what is your advice on that um, especially at the very beginning mm -hmm. Um, you can definitely start with Adobe Firefly because uh, there are all these amazing tools that you can use uh, with like generative uh, fill the text effects that are really cool. That's right. Uh, you can use uh, different uh, effects and write a prompt in the way you want your text to be. And you can... Uh, export that like as a PNG to Photoshop and then uh, work with that if you're uh, doing like a design with a logo or something uh, that involves text you can use uh, Adobe Firefly and you can use Adobe Fi Photoshop or all these options uh, that Adobe offers through Firefly and Photoshop, like InDesign, Illustrator, and you should definitely check their YouTube channel for all the tutorials they have. It's so helpful. You can yeah. learn so much. <laughs> I get a lot of YouTube. my insights from there too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a great advice. I think Adobe Firefly is a great foundational element to like learn about photography, learn about uh, typography, manipulation, um, uh, just start there or even stepping into Adobe Express from Adobe mm -hmm. Firefly. All of yes. the tools you're seeing here are powered by Adobe Firefly. So in essence, it's like the great connector to all of yes. the Adobe apps. Yes. So now we are, um, since we have limited time, I can keep it very simple, but we can do different uh, detail work here. Like I don't want this here, so I go to generative fill and just, uh, just remove generate. this part. Yes. No need to add remove. <laughs> yeah, life is so. easy. <laughs> life is so chill. Go make a coffee. Go make a, a mocha. <laughs> I remember I was... we had to do like cloning, like that For was. Hours. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's an interesting um, element that every time the AI conversation arises, I we often end up in, I am glad I don't have to do those workflows that I never enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, we have so much uh, options to work with now thanks to these amazing advancements of technology, especially with Adobe Photoshop. Yeah. Like the first time I used it, I was like, oh my God, is this reality? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a bit of a shocking factor for sure. It's definitely something that if you're accustomed to you're using the, uh, all of these creative softwares in a certain way, it is a new stepping point into a different, mm -hmm. uh, different generation of art, really. Um, yes. And we have George here saying, hi, Elnaz. Hi, hi, Scion. 
call me Scion. This is not the first time. <laughs> Scion, I kind of like that color, so I'm cool with that. Uh, happy Wednesday. George, if you did not make it early enough, remember everyone, you can always replay um, this stream and all the streams that we have online so that you can catch all the tips, all the tricks, and all the goodies from Elna's and all the, the creators that we have here on Adobe Live. Yes. I'm thinking I want to change the eye color of the whale to green to match okay. the northern lights. So we go to Lasso and select the areas and we put green whale eyes. Let's see. Oh, this is cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's way more cuter than the original. I like this is also cute, like grumpy. <laughs> yeah. <Well. laughs> I appreciate that we get three generations every mm -hmm. time because exactly. it gives me choices as opposed to waiting to render for a single mm -hmm. option. Yes. So now I'm going to work more on the color balancing of the image and maybe we could add more emphasis on the northern lights. Uh, usually, uh, uh, flatten my image. So I uh, have one layer to work with. I go to adjustments and selective color. Then I use uh, neutrals and work with uh, like uh, bringing the colors more to match the sky now it's more greenish or like cooler tone that uh goes well with the northern lights you can yeah. also choose like if you want to work with blacks but i don't really uh do that today because i want the image to be just um not contrast. that yeah so um i like oh. that now we have this cooler tone to our image but uh, usually i go to add a layer and i do overlay and then i use the brush tool to maybe brighten or make more saturated specific areas in my work so yeah. here i want the northern lights to be more green or more uh, saturated i use my option if you're on a mac i use option then uh, choose the color and then i have to keep in mind if my opacity is too much or if it's 100%, I usually bring it down to like 20% and my hardness, I bring it down so it's more soft. So now you can just make your northern lights more saturated. So you're adding a blue hue or a green hue into mm -hmm. the And lights. then, okay. yes. You can choose if you want it more saturated. You can make it uh, like that. Even add more saturation here. Yeah, this is the part that I really enjoy doing in any of my my work. It's just like uh, accentuating lights or reducing lights and just spending yes. hours there. And by the end of it, you always kind of see that it, it makes it this subtle difference, but it, a difference nonetheless. Exactly. So areas that you don't want too bright, maybe you bring down the opacity. Here, mm. I brought it down a little bit, but overall, I want to have like a green light casting over the landscape instead of this yellowish uh tone that we, oh, had. we have a we have a fellow creator here on the chat saying hold the folk live <laughs> in my town in manitoba lol oh 
<laughs> yes, actually in Canada, I heard we have a uh, hold of fox too. But there we go. it's interesting if anybody <laughs> has a real life story about meeting them because I, I have. <laughs> yeah, I feel like after this, we just had to set up on a bonfire and <laughs> start telling our hold of folk stories. <laughs> I love to hear them. Yes, uh, they're kind with people as long as you respect the nature and respect the landscape. And because that's their habitat and they don't like it when you're disrespecting it or making any like damage to it. So in Iceland, I heard sometimes they hire certain uh, medium so to speak with the Huldufog before doing constructions in the landscape. Wow. And that's like how important it is to them too wow that's really beautiful yeah i think that's nature. yeah that's such an interesting thing i think um so one thing to consider if we're talking about ai photography or photography in general photography has a, a level of a footprint right that we have to occupy when we step into different landscapes so in mm -hmm. a way you're stepping away from that footprint because you're doing it all from your imagination mm -hmm. yes Exactly. And one time I was doing a drone. Uh, I wanted to do a drone photography somewhere like in, in a volcanic area in Iceland. And I was uh, trying to uh, take my drone out of the trunk and put the blades on. And like my sister was in the driver's seat. I was out just putting my drones together. Then I look up and there's a person standing in front of me and uh, uh, she's like, hi, I just wanted to let you know this is a private property and we would appreciate if you don't use your drone. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Yes, I will never uh, definitely not use my drone here since you told me. Interesting. And uh, the moment I put my drone back and... I look up, she was gone, and <laughs> I don't know what happened. What? But my sister said <laughs> she didn't see anything. So wow. maybe. <laughs> so maybe it was a hold of folk yes. telling you. Please I'm stop. definitely wow. sure it was a hold of <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that so was... interesting. And even even if that's the case, like it's, yeah, there's, there's certain levels of uh, regulations on purpose mm -hmm. because we are to just protect them. Um, the people around us the habitats it you know we don't do we don't cr create create creative work at the expense of mm -hmm. other things that are special to us right yes yes so we're uh, kind of done with the image i think everything looks nice um there's certain areas that i would just work like different details that i want to work with uh, but i can also show you a different version that i made uh in photoshop um yeah sure that would be great yeah we have one, about like 10 minutes yes this was also something i was working with i like the cute <laughs> well and i added the ladder here um so the original one was this and then I added the whale I wrote a slide in the shape of a whale in a playground and these are the options I got how do you but feel I... about the fact that sometimes you don't get the same exact uh, result so even from your practice to what you're doing today the results are all, always going to be mm -hmm. very varied different mm -hmm. I try to uh, figure out what it is that makes a difference so sometimes it's all about the placement of the words in your prompt uh, like if you put a veil first and then a slide it gives you something more focused on the veil rather oh, than a slide but um the priority it, like mm -hmm. in order of, of the words yes 
Mm. You have to think about the the specific, like the focus of your idea, what it is. For, in this right. case, for me, it's the slide, like the playground is my focus. But the shape can come in different ways. Like if I say um, a slide in the shape of a horse, uh, it makes a difference. But a horse in the shape of a slide could be like a totally different thing. Right. Yeah. It, do you ever find yourself writing? Do you do you speak any other language? You write in a different language? To... I speak Farsi, but I never mm. tried writing a prompt in Farsi. Does, okay. Uh, does Adobe support Persian or? Mm, I, I'm, I'm not, not sure. entirely sure, but um, I would be curious to try. find out. <laughs> Yeah, I would be curious <laughs> to find out. We're we're very big fans of experiments, clearly. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but Let's it's, try. I, I think about that because sometimes there are words in English that are two words of the same. So like um an armrest is an arm and a rest, right? Mm -hmm. So there's two words, so it might create an arm, an actual arm. Or you mm -hmm. say the word palm, it means two things. Palm it could be a palm tree, it could be the palm of your hand. So yes, exactly. sometimes I find myself uh, employing my second language, which is Spanish, to have a word that's very exclusive to that thing. So it doesn't have two bounded words. And that helps me generate something new. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, we could try. Maybe <laughs> if I write in Farsi, so a slide uh, in the shape uh, of a horse yeah and chad yeah. if you speak another language i definitely encourage you we encourage you to experiment tonight or today wherever whatever time zone you're in <laughs> and um and see what results you get versus you know the um og language that adobe firefly came out in english yeah I, okay so i wrote in farsi uh, and it's working oh this awesome. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's amazing. That's yeah, I think there's over a hundred languages. Um, wow. So I'm so glad Farsi is <laughs> one of them. Yes, that's like mind blowing to me. <laughs> I learned something today myself. And here, like, uh, I thought the ladder maybe is not exactly what I want. So I added the uh, ladder. And I added this hole so the person can go up and uh, slide down. <laughs> and um, we could always do sky replacement again. I usually flatten my image and go to sky. Maybe we add northern, northern lights again or something different. We could add um, a cosmic. Oh, now it's Farsi. Yeah. <laughs> back, back to English. <laughs> cosmic. Uh, we we have a question here from George. Can I generate a name tag using Braille embossing on metal with Firefly using a reference image? Wow, that seems like a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is possible. I feel like I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, I think it's possible. Logistically, I don't know. Are you trying to print on uh, metal? Sounds very interesting, but I'd love to see that process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and tag <Wow>. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this amazing thing about AI is it teaches you how much your imagination is wild, like the things <laughs> yeah. you imagine. It's like yeah. there's no limit. <laughs> right, right. That's a that's a good example of like no limits. Just if you mm -hmm. can think it, potentially you can, you know, find the ways to approach yes. it that could work out for you. Exactly. So I'm thinking of changing the sky, although it's a beautiful sky here. This is giving me like more illustration kind of. I like this um purplish sky with the stars but we could add the cloudy night 
night sky. Wait. You're welcome, George. George says thanks for the feedback. <laughs> You're welcome. We're rooting for you. We're rooting for you. Um, I'm curious. Do you find a difference in the renderings in Adobe Firefly at the moment versus Photoshop? Um, just because you said the sky looks a little bit more illustrative. Mm -hmm. I feel like in Firefly, when we are using the prompts, it's more specific to our prompt that, uh, for example, if you want the um, slide in a shape of a whale, it's giving you something more close to what you asked but mm. because here you are doing every layer one by one maybe it uh it, it takes some experimentation to get something that matches the overall uh mm. image but um that's interesting i feel like it it's very close to firefly yeah, I mean, it's possible that they're not exactly the same mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. They're often being uh, being improved at different timelines. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very possible. But I'm curious about that because you're doing this quite often. This is like core focus of your of your work. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel like you've inspired me to change my order of operations to start at Adobe Firefly as opposed to start in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, just because I have seen those renders came out amazing. Yes. I think it's more center, like it's more focused on your prompt. So here we can try um, with Northern Lights and see how different our uh, result is from doing that in Photoshop, like doing a sky replacement. Yeah, sky yeah. replacements really wow, that's beautiful. These are beautiful. And the color palette. Mm -hmm. is... Oh my god, this light is everything. It's so pretty. <laughs> wow. Like it's melting my heart. <laughs> I think it was Alessandra on the chat earlier was loving our colors. Alessandra, mm -hmm. where you at? I know you're gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, like, that's beautiful. You see how it's more um cohesive maybe it blends well every element that you wrote in your prompt right is right. present yeah. in your work especially like this veil maybe yeah we so go... it's it's a very complex request potentially start in adobe firefly and work yourself into the final elements of so those ad mm -hmm. additive elements or removing yes. contrasting all the things that you were able to do in your workflow in yes. photoshop yes these are nice. So I would try with a horse and see what we get. And we could also do different aspect ratios because sometimes those can make a difference in the shot. If it's like a landscape, it's more like photographic, I feel. Really? Usually, oh, interesting. I feel okay. these are um... pretty. We have a question from YouTube, how to prompt something transparent over an object. For example, adding snow or clear ice over leaves or flowers. That's In definitely Photoshop or I know my my mind went immediately to Photoshop because I feel like that would be a Photoshop uh, mm -hmm. ask. Um, don't know if in Photoshop, if you're referring to Adobe Firefly, it's a it's a pretty interesting thing because you're layering, right? Mm hmm. We could say like a slide in the shape of a frozen horse. <laughs> like how to emulate transparency. We're uh Adobe Firefly is really good with reflections. So mm -hmm. I imagine something like transparency has to have a degree of reflection to really um you know come across as something transparent. But yeah, that's that's a really curious uh prompt. Mm -hmm. I'm exactly. dying to try it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting question. Like an so, igloo, maybe that is transparent. I did see you. You created something like that, um, right? One of your one of your artworks in the beginning had a mm -hmm. had a level in, of transparency. I don't know if it, you meant to do that. 
in my F you mean um, on my on Behan's. I think mm -hmm. I saw that. I may be wrong, but maybe there's, there's room for for I feel like reflections in it'll be firefly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You I can... love I love these. The color palettes on these yes. are my cup are... of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pink is life. <laughs> <laughs> We could also do that uh, portrait and see how different it's going to be in terms of the composition. And um, usually I start with landscape because we I have the option of expanding it in Photoshop. But uh, yeah, um, portrait is also cool. Since I added the frozen horse, it's giving me this a snowy playground yeah i like how it's Ooh, more that's so cool mm -hmm. no it's i like the with... leading lines kind of pointing at the mm -hmm. horse um thanks sean thanks for there uh, sean is encouraging folks to try some of these prompts in mm -hmm. adobe firefly yes yeah the more you write the more experimentations you do yeah you get a sense of how ai works and how you can have more control over your prompts and your overall uh, renders so, yeah keep a notebook of all the prompts mm -hmm. that come to your head and then you know spend mm -hmm. like a good time there trying to test it out mm -hmm. so now you can even remove all of these options that I initially added and you can see what uh, the original render would look like without any added effect. Um, Elna's we're on our last five minutes. Mm -hmm. So definitely run us through some of the work that you um, have been doing lately where we can connect with you and um, also a little um, a little bit of what we did today because it was amazing it was a wild ride sure um so today we did uh some experimentation with writing different prompts in adobe firefly we used so many settings that are available in the new version of adobe firefly we did um different settings in the lighting composition color tones and how different each setting makes your work, the overall render of your uh, prompt. Yeah, uh, and then we got a lot of different things. Yes, and we, uh, we then took the work to Adobe Photoshop. We uh, did expansion of the frame. The initial image was a daytime. Then we select did a select sky. We added the uh, northern lights. We did a sky replacement, then we did a generative expand uh, of the frame, and then we added different elements. <laughs> I love that you're on the history panel. This is like <laughs> very, very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> and then we added different elements, uh, imaginary and fantastical elements to create our uh, desired scene and all the folk um, <laughs> little little townhouse yes and at the end i did some color balance and i did adjustments with the overlay layer to the wow, brightness and i just noticed yes. how big of a difference that was <laughs> yes it was uh, such a fun experiment with uh, yeah. all these amazing tools and can you let us know where we can um connect with you where we can see more of your experimentations and your work uh if you have a behans or social media those spaces definitely. to connect with folks here on the chat sure you can definitely check my instagram i'm very active there i post uh, almost daily my experimentations um and different projects um i use video and uh, still images usually and sometimes i post on twitter i'm active there 
and on Behance, I have a couple of projects. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Elnaz. This was wonderful. I've learned so much from you, and I can just tell this is the very beginning of your journey. Um, for everyone else, keep up with the next upcoming stream with Voodoo Val. And thank you for being such wonderful folks on the chat asking all the questions. Again, my name is Sun Lagos and see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.